Hello there, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Gareth and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make overlays for BMix and as well as create some very basic animation for those overlays. I know this is uh, quite an important thing and it was really something that I couldn't really find any documentation for both on the BMix website or just on Google in general. One thing that did pop up however when I was searching for this was a guy called Havard uh, and I checked out his channel and he had some videos of animation and stuff in, in vmix uh, and I was like how the how you know how the hell has he done that so I ended up contacting him and getting his Skype contact and uh, started having a few conversations with him and you know he's a really really nice guy and he he talked me through pretty much every step of the way of, of how to how to create overlays for vmix and how to how to animate them as well and, and since then I've sort of took it into my own and you know just carried on exploring what I can do with with blend and and that's where I am today so before you actually get started there are a few things that need to be set up one thing you definitely need to have well you don't definitely need to have it you can write this sort of stuff with X, xml or xaml uh, but you know this makes it a visual way of doing that and near impossible if you just do it the text way but anyway so you need to make sure you got blend and what we're going to do is we're going to click new project and here you need to make sure that you know your your settings are are, are the same. So you need to make sure that uh, WPF is selected here, and then WPF application. And in the name you can put whatever you want, but you're probably going to want to uh, put a reference in there that you're going to be able to identify it by, because you know as you get more projects, it's going to get a little bit confusing. Location, of course, is where the this file, this project is stored. Language, Visual Basic, and then version 4.0. And uh, we're going to click OK. And this is just going to be your little canvas window. Now, before we actually get started, we need to change up a few things and, and set up a few things. So the first thing we're going to do is where it's got WPF application one. Well, your project name will be here, but mine says WPF application one. We're going to right-click that, and then we're going to click Add Reference. And then we are going to navigate to the VMix folder. And inside of the vmix folder, you'll see vmix title library .dll. Now, your uh, location of the vmix folder is probably going to be different. Usually, it's within the you know you C drive from then program files vmix, but mine is uh, in, in my D drive. And then we're going to click open. So that's now added the vmix title library to um, the references for the project. The next thing we actually need to do before we get started is press F11. Now what F11 does is bring up your coding window. Uh, if you press it again it brings up, it has a coding window but you can also see your project at the same time so when you're editing code you can also see a visual reference of of what's going on but for the purposes of this video I'm just going to put it full screen just so you can actually see the text of, of what's going on. Now just below the second uh, line so onto the third line which becomes the fourth because of window at the top what we're going to type here is x m l n s colon mtl equals and then quotation marks we don't want three of those we only want the two we're going to type in clr clear name space colon and then v mix title library and then semicolon assembly equals v mix title library. Now you'll notice that will be the same name as the as the file we just added into the references, and now we're just stating that it's a part of of this this project of this uh, particular XAML file. So uh, that is all fine and dandy. And now the last thing we need to do, really, or the last main thing we need to do, is change it from window to a user control so what we're just going to type in here is user control and then we're going to do exactly the same at the bottom just to you know make sure the tags match up and are the same and that uh, the first first thing you'll probably notice is that title is now underlined uh, it's because title isn't a part of the user control uh, setup so we just remove that and then we're good to go and also here you're probably going to want to specify what the width and height of your project is because I usually work uh, with with game stream and stuff it's usually between you know 720p or 1080 so I guess for now we can just set up um, this at 1080 
Uh, and then we can press F11 again. And we can press Control and minus to zoom out so we can see more of our project or I don't know what you call it, canvas I guess is what the uh, proper name is. And that is now you pretty much set up ready to start creating and being creative. Okay great, so everything is now set up and ready to create some stuff for vMix. Uh, the first thing we're going to create is some text that will be editable in vMix, so updating tiles and stuff. vMix already has its own presets, but let's be honest, everyone wants to make their own customized set. So the first thing we're going to do is add some text. Uh, usually you would add text using the text box text block tool here but because of the way that user control works and the vmix title library we're not going to do that you can do that and then modify it later but um, because of the tools that are available through vmix uh, sorry through blend uh, you're probably better off just doing it the manual way so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press F11 to bring up the code editor here we see the grid tag here which is where everything in terms of the content will be placed inside of what we're going to do to start with is remove the forward slash which will stop the tag being closed and then we're just going to close it further down here which means you know we can then place content in the, the middle of here so it saves typing out I'm just going to paste in something here uh, and then I'll just talk through what's going on here so we're creating an element that is a text block design and then we're referencing to MTL which of course was referenced up here uh, when we was calling the vMix title library. The name is defined as title so when you go inside of vMix and you go into the title editor you will see uh, your heading uh, set as title and then text we've just got some pre predefined text here and then the text block is closed out so if we press F11 again we should see the text there which we do so if we click that what we're going to do is press, press control and minus just to zoom out a little bit so we can see more of the project or the the canvas and then we're going to click the properties tab at the top and what's going to happen is it's going to open up this window not all of it may be showing but uh, this is just what I have showing at the moment and from this panel this properties panel you can edit pretty much everything to do with the text so for example here we have fill selected if we click here in the in the colors we can see we can actually change the text which is great we can also change the opacity depending on what we want further down is a layout this is where all the the settings are set for the the height the width and such which you can modify here or by clicking the the handles around the box to change the size and such. So we're going to collapse that, get out of miscellaneous. Now down here we can actually change the font, so let's just choose a random font. We can change the size, so we're just going to up the size. You can also change font style, oblique and, and such and other things there as well. Uh, but it's just a good idea to get familiar with all these different settings because further down the line you're probably going to use uh, a few of them. So, but then others are used for applications as such, so you won't need to worry about all of them. So that is now the title created, and realistically, if we if we save this out and put it into vMix, we should then be able to edit the title. But I'm not going to show you that because we now want to animate this. We want to do some animation. So let's get on with it. So down the bottom of my screen during this video so far you may have seen some of the sized objects and timeline. If this doesn't show on your screen you can go to the top where it says window and then click that and you can actually uh, set it to open there where it says objects and timeline. And and the same for the other things on my screen as well. Maybe your your window doesn't look like mine. Mine's currently set for animation you know, because I don't really do any design work in here. I just import images so um, we're just make sure that's selected because you need this at the bottom of the screen uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create click new and what we're going to do is create a storyboard we want we want to make sure this is important you want to make sure that the storyboard is saved as storyboard one and this is going to bring up our time at the bottom now if you've used programs such as flash or after effects um, you'll probably be familiar with how keyframes and such work but I will say this, it is very finicky in this programming blend, it's, it's a little bit different as to how things work in a way. 
because in flash and stuff you can you manually add a keyframe or in after effects you manually add a keyframe in this it will just add it um you know depending on if it's changed actually it does do that in in after effects and such as well but it's just it's just not it doesn't seem to be as intuitive inside of blend so what we're going to do now so we've got our, our title here and what I'm going to do, I'm going to just want it to do a basic slide-in animation. So I'm going to create a, a keyframe here, which is the, the little icon I just uh, clicked. And you'll see on the timeline there, it's created a keyframe. Now, I'm going to go back to zero, and then click another keyframe. So now we have two keyframes with the text in the same position. For the first keyframe, I'm now going to click the text and drag it to the left. I'm going to hold down shift just to make sure it's a straight line and that is it so now if we uh, click play we should see the text slide and of course you can always click and drag the keyframe just to make it smaller so the animation is quicker um, but that you know that's just your basic basic animation and now if we click the little x next to the storyboard it's going to close the storyboard we're now back to our default canvas um, and we can click the arrow here and click storyboard and we're back in our storyboard so that is now the animation in and it was as simple as that next what we're going to do is we're going to create an animation out so you can either do that manually or you can do that the clever shortcut way so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into uh, storyboard one and then we're going to click this arrow next to the plus sign and we're going to go down to duplicate and what it's going to do is it's just going to duplicate the storyboard and give it a name storyboard underscore copy one we're going to click the arrow again we're going to click rename and what we need to call this is storyboard two this will be the animation out so animation out will always be storyboard two animation in will always be storyboard one and what you'll notice still is you know it's just playing and it's just doing what it did so what we're going to do again is click the arrow go down to reverse and click that now that's just gonna reverse the animation completely so now if we were to play the animation in we'll get storyboard one which plays it in and then if we go to storyboard two when you play it out it's just gonna slide back out so you can imagine like what the sort of things is you can do with this you can also create masks I'm not going to show that in this video but if you would like it then just let me know and I'll I'll try and hook it up as these videos can be quite long but that is the very gist of uh, create animations and actually I've just remembered something that you're definitely uh, going to need to know so if we click in the storyboard and drag and select the keyframes what you'll notice is on the right you'll have something that says uh, easing what you need to ensure is that key spline is selected if it says easing function it's not going to work and the same for storyboard one we're just going to double check uh, it should be selected as the same but oh and going one of the keyframes here is actually easing function so we're going to click key spline key spline because otherwise that wouldn't have worked and now it should be ready to go into vmix so thank you for watching this i'm sorry it was a little bit, little bit long sorry if i was a bit monotonous and a bit monotone uh, i do apologize for that but hopefully this has been useful to you because like I said I know there wasn't really anything on the internet if you'd like further tutorials anything you'd like to know let me know I can also upload some examples of, of, of work I've done in the past as well but other than that thank you for watching remember to subscribe if you want sort of these videos in the future of course you don't have to but you know it's always nice isn't it to see that number go up but nevertheless thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one if you're interested peace